if we're going to reboot something. We just make sure it's good. Hello. It's time to sit down, put in those earbuds so as not to disturb the neighbors, and join us for another episode of Off Book, a podcast where we talk all about Broadway, movies, TV shows, and anything else that we want to geek out about. I'm Mark Stover the Third. And I'm Haley Briggs. Today's episode is all about remakes and reboots. The good, the bad, and the wait, wait. Did you just use a season one intro? Yes, I did. And that seems an awful lot like what some remakes and reboots are, while some actually have some originality, and I find that very interesting. So I guess it depends, because there's movie reboots and show reboots or remakes or whatever. Mm-hmm. So it really depends. Um, I typically, there are some really good show reboots that I know about. Um, like there's Hawaii Five-0, that came, mm-hmm. that you did it. I think it was a remake. I don't know if it was a reboot. Um, right. Because I think it was a completely different plot than the other one. Okay. I didn't actually watch the other one. Couldn't tell you. Yeah, I haven't watched either, so I'm even less help. <laughs> I think that I, I, the biggest difference to me between the ones that are good and the ones that are just the worst is that this sounds really obvious, but it has to be good. And I think that there are so many that focus on trying to recreate whatever the original had, and they don't take the time to make sure it's good. And it sounds ridiculous that we're we're gonna make a full episode that just boils down to make a good film. But you know, make sure it's good before you make it. Right. Don't just try to. Like, for sure, and it has to be like people want a remake. Yes. So like, I remember when they did. Oh, I don't know if this. If Cinderella or Beauty and the Beast came out first, but when Disney was remaking those movies, people were not happy about it. Yeah. Like, people were just like, why can't you leave the original story alone? Mm -hmm. And it got even worse when Mulan came out because people were like, this is not the Disney version. And so Disney was like, yeah, okay, and? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah. The the Disney live action remakes are definitely a good example of Disney knows they can make money if they use this franchise or this this name, and so they want to keep making money off of it, and that's really all that matters. So they don't really put a lot of work into making sure it's good or something that people care about or something that anybody wants at all. Exactly. Another good one is Hairspray. I haven't seen that, but I've heard it's good. They did that movie like three or four times. I like yeah. the uh, Zac Efron version the best. Okay. Yeah. Mr. High School Musical Man. Yes, High School Musical Man, who didn't even sing in the first High School Musical. Well, he sang like the first line of the song to transition, but you know. Yeah, they told me it was too, like, terrible to do it. And now look at you starting in Hairspray. Um, Which is funny, because I think that, like, came out a little bit after. Or maybe even before. Okay, High School Musical came out literally a year after he did Hairspray. So Disney Channel original movies have higher uh... standards, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's really weird. Um, anyways. Maybe it was just the arrangement of the, the song. Yeah, it's like he sings multiple songs in there. Apparently he was bad or enough for High School Musical. I don't know. If you want your aspirations crushed for work for Disney. I did not say that. <laughs> don't, don't come after me, Disney. Um, but I know that people, like, when Disney first started doing their remakes, they, people did not want them. Right. Um, but I know that, like, The Lion King was accepted to a point until people actually saw it and they're like, what is this horrifying experience that I'm experiencing? (laughs) And then it's, Jungle Book was a popular one that Mm -hmm. came out and people loved that one. They thought it should have been live action in the first place, but obviously way back then they didn't do that. Yeah. Um, Aladdin was a big topic when I worked at the movie theater right? because it didn't have Robin Williams in it because he passed away however so many years ago and yeah. people thought that um, Will Smith was going to screw everything up which he didn't but also I didn't like the film you know it was pretty mediocre which honestly I think is 
generally the, the outcome of these is either you have like the lion king or Mulan, which are just the worst and then the rest of them are they're okay movies but they're not as good as the first one so why wouldn't you just re-release the first one if you want to blindly get money from a movie just re-release the one we actually want to watch give us some more bonus features or something that's easier cost you less money and we are less mad at you come on guys i did like the actors um in aladdin and then i i enjoyed like the songs how um they like will smith put like an own spin on the songs a little bit that's a punch that's all you gotta do is rub that lamp that's fair but otherwise i don't know i don't really see the like it's cool seeing them live action but it's like yeah what do you like how yeah it's how do you gauge like what people want i guess yeah i think there's a, there's a weird balance but you have to make sure that you're changing enough that it warrants existing because if you did it like lion king was just like word for word the original movie most of the time so why would they even make that but on the other hand you don't want to change so much that it's an unrecognizable film so you have to try to find that line where it's kind of like the original but also it's different and it has it pays homage to the original but is its own thing and it's this weird sort of you have to find the exact right formula to try to make it successful mm -hmm. yeah it's i don't know like when they come out with trailers and stuff i guess it's when they gauge what people want but by then the movie's already made yeah and they're just not gonna be like oh we're just kidding it's not gonna come out because you guys don't want it Yes, Sonic the Hedgehog is not the industry standard. Like, and then there's other times where they bully into the fact the movie. I know this isn't a remake or a reboot when that Sonic movie came out. Yeah. Everyone on social media was bullying them to fix how um, Sonic looked. It's really, really funny. It's so funny. I mean, it, 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 it does look much better. It doesn't look as horrifying this time, which is good. The movie was only okay, but you know. They're coming out with a second one. Yeah, so I guess I it technically is like a remake. <laughs> well, Sequel. <no. laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I just I think that it's it's interesting to hear. I and mean, obviously you'll have the people that are just gonna shout from the rooftops that how would run out of ideas and that all we're getting is are remakes or reboots, but also like that's what people are going to see and I think it's really interesting that we keep saying, oh, these are so bad. And then we keep going into seeing them, and then we say, oh, that was really bad. What if I go see that? And then we go watch the next one. And so I think that maybe we, if we're going to reboot something, we just make sure it's good. We make sure that it is a natural, it feels like the original. It you know, has the same tone, unless that's not what you're going for. But also, it isn't just the same film over again. Yeah, it's it's hard because like I don't really like reboots and remi re remixes. This is not music. <laughs> remakes um very much just because like i like the original movie i i decide whether i like the original movie or not and then i don't usually go see a remake or a reboot because mm -hmm. it's just kind of like mm. but i guess if it's good enough like obviously i saw aladdin so if it's good enough and i like it enough then i'll go see it but yeah i don't know i feel like the industry is getting a little lazy with remakes and reboots <laughs> yeah I think it's just because they know that it's going to make money. Have you seen the uh, 2016 Ghostbusters movie? Mm, I don't think so. Is that the one with the all women squad? Yes. Oh, I remember when that came out. It, I think that, that is probably, aside from the live action remakes that Disney has done, one of the best examples of just not a good film. And I think had it not been... Ghostbusters had it been an original film that didn't have the original version to land on. Like the original wasn't perfect. I'll, I'll I'll give it that. But this new one just felt so empty. It felt like it was created more through marketing and trying to analyze what was going to make the most money. Just it, it was entirely fueled by money, and it when you watched it, it was just like. I I understand how some of these might have worked on paper, but. None of this is enjoyable. What? I didn't see it, but I can see what they were trying to do with like an all female, like go feminist, see Yeah, it's a good idea. It just. And I saw that they're coming out with yet yeah, another Ghostbusters movie. Yeah. With the kid from Stranger Things. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, and what's interesting is that is a sequel to the original movie, because in 2016 they tried to reboot the original, so it was the same story as the original, but with the different actors and stuff. Whereas this is in the same universe and taking place after the events of the first one, so the, the, the reboot is not in this universe. So it, it's like the the son of one of the original main characters. And I think that's really interesting that within a couple of years, we're getting two completely different takes on a follow-up to the original story. And I think mm-hmm. that's really cool because one of them was really bad and one of them will hopefully be good. It looks good so far. Yeah, I like, there's so many Ghostbusters movies and I actually haven't seen any of them. So <laughs> I know I've seen Casper the Friendly Ghost. Does that count? Sure, why not? <laughs> um, it like it's almost feels like they're trying to do too much sometimes and i think people are telling them that it was like when um they were trying to do oh what was it i think it was like a tv show was trying to get like um a sequel and everyone was like no the show left off fine but they actually listened that's good so i feel like people aren't getting listened or like the companies aren't listening to their viewers about what they want and what they don't want. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and now, a word from our sponsor. Today's episode is sponsored by The Viz, a reboot of WandaVision. Didn't that just come out? Well, yeah, but they need to start raising funds now so they can have the show written in time to release it as soon as WandaVision is no longer popular. It'll be basically the exact same thing as the original, just with the worst cast, bad VFX, and pop culture references that are very old at this point. That sounds not good. Uh, I agree. How then do you make a reboot that isn't just awful? Like I was just saying, listen to your audience and what they want. I yeah. feel like nowadays with social media, there's enough like, like thing, like enough information to gather about what people want to see. Mm-hmm. Especially for Disney, because I don't think the live. Like the live actions are like popular with kids, but the people who grow up with the animated version are like, "What is this? Why would you even release this?" Like, yeah. So it's like, what it, do you? It, you just need to listen. <laughs> yeah, I think that if Disney wants to make live action movies, I think that regardless of the quality of those movies, I think something like the Cruella or the Maleficent movies, where it's a spin off of it, where you can tell a story that doesn't have to just redo the original because we've all seen that the likelihood that you're going to make a better film or even one that's as good as the original is practically zero so maybe just don't try to just redo the original find something else that differentiates your film other than better effects because visual effects is not a good reason to make a film i was gonna say unless it is better than the original because some movies aren't good but then their remakes or reboots or are so it's <laughs> But unless you're sure you can do that. Like you were saying, like if Disney came out with each like villain with their backstory, like they've done with Maleficent and Cruella, I think that's where they're heading because they've done two Seems of like them already. Um, villain cinematic universe. That'd be cool. Um, and you could guess, I guess you can count that as like a remake because it's telling the villain's story from their yeah. point of view. And so like, I know Cruella did super well in box office. Right. I heard it was super popular and so like I think they just need to like survey and ask what people are interested in seeing Mm -hmm. and then make sure you have a good cast as well that a good cast always makes a good movie and if it doesn't have a good cast it's not gonna go well yeah I think that uh I don't know if you've seen the Men in Black International movie that came out a couple years ago Mm -mm. it it was a sequel because there were three Three? Two or three. I can't remember. Original Men in Black movies with Will Smith and a couple other main cast members that kind of rotated through. And then they tried to reboot it. I think it was 2017 with uh, Chris Hemsworth and and Tessa Thompson who worked together Mm -hmm. in Thor Ragnarok and were pretty good together. But they just did not work with their writing and the dynamic. So I think not only do do you need to have a good cast because those two people are very good actors, you also need to make sure that the writing is good and works with the people you've chosen. Don't just cast a random big name celebrity, because no matter how good of an actor you are, if you're given bad material or material that doesn't fit you, it's not gonna work. Yeah, because it's like if they don't have it, if it's like a romance movie and they don't have the chemistry, like what are you supposed to do with that? Right. And so, like with 
Alad and the two actors were super like cool with each other and so they had that chemistry on screen but like oh what movie was it Beauty and the Beast it felt awkward to me yeah I think part of it was that Emma Watson was talking to a completely CG animal I mean Dan Stevens was there on set sometimes it sounds like to, to do the motion capture stuff but I think motion capture is weird in general because you're talking to a person, but you're actually looking eight feet above them at the tennis ball that's supposed to be their head. What's something like the Beast, where he's way taller than the actor is, and that can get really weird because of the way they decided to do that. <laughs> yeah, that because that was the first. I think was the first like Disney remake per se. It was at least the, the first one that got a ton of attention. I don't know if it was the first one, but it was definitely the first major one that. Nope, Cinderella was the first one. Okay. I heard of the Cinderella once, and then I heard people didn't like it, so. Yeah. And the only reason people went to watch it was because of Kate Blanchett, because she played the evil stepmother. <laughs> mm, right. See, and that's, Maybe's? even if it's bad, people will go see it for certain names as well, too. Yeah, unfortunately, that's what a lot of studios have figured out. Just <laughs> take a classic film, put a big name celebrity in it, and release it, and no matter how bad it is, everybody will go see it. <laughs> Which is interesting because I don't know if you watched the uh, Jumanji reboot, the Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle, and then the Next Level movies. I watched the first one, which is, I thought it was hilarious. It's actually really good, and I think it, it, it pays tribute to the original very well. It feels like a very similar tone. It has big name celebrities, but also they do a good job. It's 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 an original film, but also it still feels thematically connected. I think that's surprisingly a really good reboot of that that franchise, and I'm I'm surprised by that, but I'm very impressed. The the casting was immaculate. Um, like the comedic lines were on point. It was really good. I. Like, it's definitely different from the first one, mm -hmm. but, or like the first one with Robin Williams. Right. But I think it was a good example of a reboot because yeah. Jumanji, obviously, the game never ends. So, mm -hmm. like, obviously, the movie keeps going because at the end of the very first one with Robin Williams, you see, like, it become, like, unburying itself basically, and someone picks it up. And then yeah. somehow it gets turned into a video game because the first movie was back in like 1981 or 1995. Sorry, with the Robin Williams, obviously. Mm -hmm. it got turned into a video game and then they go in the video game, but. Yeah, I mean, that, it makes thematical it, sense. It, I was gonna say, it's a good like remake because yeah. they follow it so well from the original, in my opinion. Yeah, no, it's it's something that doesn't feel like it's trying too hard, but also is very good. It's not perfect. I mean, the villain of that movie is very one-dimensional, and at first that's because they're making fun of the one-dimensional video game characters, but then he becomes an actual villain because he has actual dialogue scenes instead of just a cut scene. So it's not perfect, but it is an overall pretty good movie and it set itself up for a full that didn't, in a way that didn't feel like it was, you know, trying to say, oh, but we want more money. It felt like it actually had places to go and it wouldn't more places. It was interesting. Mm hmm I haven't seen like the third one, quote unquote, but like the chemistry between the, like, Duane, um, Kevin, Karen, and, um, Jack Black is so funny. We're on a first name basis with everybody but Jack Black. He knows what he did. Yeah, yep. Um, but it's, it just, it's such a good casting. So like good casting and you need to want, you need to know people want it. Yeah. And good producers too. Right. Because some producers just don't care. They want to make money, but. Yeah. I don't know, another one that I find interesting. Uh, have you watched the Jurassic World movies? I've seen one of them, like half of it. It is just exactly like Jurassic Park, except with different cast, and it's in the modern era. It almost feels like it's a remake, except it's technically in the same timeline as the originals, but only because 
I guess they decided to rebuild Jurassic Park because they thought, hey, you know this thing that killed a bunch of people and was a very bad idea? What if we did that? And so the premise is just so dumb. Because what we were talking about with Jumanji, where the premise felt natural, it made sense. It doesn't even make sense as a, I guess, technically a sequel or a, a reboot of this. Because why would you do this and they acknowledge it in the film that it's dumb? but then do it anyway. And I don't know, it just feels like there's absolutely no reason for it to exist. And they're not that bad. It's just like, why? Why would you do this? You're just making the same movies over again, except you're not even remaking it. You're just pretending like this plot hasn't been done before, even though it has. Just remake it at that point. <laughs> yeah. it's It's hard because it's like, you want to have that target audience, but you never know what people are going to want and what nowadays, like, we just need some more original movies to come out. Yeah. And at the very least, I think if you're going to do a remake, I think make it something like the 2006 Charlie and the Chocolate Factory movie with Johnny Depp. I don't really like that movie, but I think that that is something that has a reason to exist because if you look at that and compare it to the Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory movie with Gene Wilder, it is vastly different. And I think that both of those, I think it's because both of those are based on the same book, but they had vastly different interpretations in terms of casting and dialogue and artistic style. I mean, they're two almost entirely different movies. And I think that if you're going to tell the same story over again, do something like that where, you know, it should be ev very evident from the beginning why you're doing this. We shouldn't have to just guess. Is it because of the, you know, the dollars? Make have have a reason and and make that the guiding factor, not just. We think that this one might be popular. <laughs> yeah, I agree. It's a tricky slope for sure. Yeah. Anyway, this transmission has now terminated. Thank you for participating. Stop reusing old audio. Next time we'll be talking all about high school productions and what makes the good ones good and the bad ones, you know. Until then, aloha, which means hello and goodbye. In this case, it means goodbye. We're, we're done. Goodbye.